Hey guys, how's it going? This is Lincoln A. Castellanos. I play Tobias on AMC's Fear of the Walking Dead, and you're listening to Preach Question. <laughs> Greetings to everybody out there. Welcome back to Creech Questions, brought to you in part by The Dead Connection. I am your host, CJ Creech, and we've got a great episode for you today. First off, as usual on the background, is The Irma and Louise with their awesome song, East Virginia. You can check out more of their music at www.theirmalouise.ch. Unfortunately, Alyssa is unable to join us as co-host this week. But rest assured, she will be back next week as our regular co-host and co-reviewer of our Fear the Walking Dead wrap-up for the season finale of Fear the Walking Dead. Now, that's not going to stop us from having a great episode today. We've got an interview with Lincoln Castellanos, who you know as Tobias from Fear the Walking Dead. And we've also got our Fear the Walking Dead wrap-up, where we are reviewing episode 5. Now, before we get into that, let's go ahead and get into our shout-outs. You give me a gift, bam. Thank you, Note. You invite me somewhere, pow, RSVP. You do me a favor, wham, favor returned. Do not test my politeness. Now, the first shout-out today is going to be a little more personal than I usually get, but I feel it is indeed worth mentioning. If you don't know a lot about me, I do have a daughter and her name is Alexis Creech and she goes by Lexi. Well today as of this recording is September 28th. It's also the day that this podcast is released. My little girl is celebrating her fourth birthday. So it's a very exciting time. I'm really excited to see what the age of four brings us. And overall, she's very excited for today. We've been celebrating her birthday all weekend. And if you want, you can always tweet any or Facebook any sort of support. Or if you have a message for her, I'll definitely pass it on. But yeah, my daughter's turned four, so I want to give a shout out to Lexi. Daddy, of course, loves you. And happy birthday once again. Now, the next shout out is for a uh, fellow filmmaker, and that is uh, Romy at Romy Row Films. Now, if you've been uh, watching most of the Walker Stalkers parody videos, then you are going to be very familiar with Romy's work. He shot the Sugar parody. He shot Kill 'Em Off. Uh, he shot a lot of the other footage that they have at the uh, that they've been shooting at the cons. And now he also shot his own Bad Blood parody, which is the most recent video. They're really great videos. If you haven't seen them, you should definitely check them out. And if you have seen them, then you obviously know how great they are. Well, what's going on is Romy uh, has got an Indiegogo up for his parody films. He wants to make more. And that's where you can come in and contribute. And there's all sorts of levels from watching the filming of these parodies to actually being in the parodies, getting awesome McFarlane figures, signed 8x10s of the cast from these videos. There's so many uh, good reward levels and incentives that I definitely recommend checking it out. First off, you should definitely follow and, and like Romy on Facebook. If you type in Romy Row Films, his page will pop up. That's R-O-M-E-Y, R-O, Films. And if you want to go ahead and go straight to donate for that Indiegogo, which you definitely should. And once again, it's a great cause. And, um, you know, who, who doesn't love parody videos, especially when it has all of your favorite Walking Dead people? The link to that is not only on the Facebook page, but I'm going to give it to you on here. It's going to be at www.org. I-G-G dot M-E slash A-T slash T-W-D parodies. Once again, if you haven't checked these out and you're a fan of The Walking Dead, you're really missing out. I highly recommend watching them and I highly recommend donating. 
once again, there's so many great uh, incentives that not only do you get to help out, but you get some great rewards for doing so. So definitely go ahead and give them a like and donate if you can. Now that is going to wrap it up for shout outs this week. So let's go ahead and get to our Fear the Walking Dead wrap up. It seems that it happens every single week. I'm always wrong on Fear the Walking Dead and my guesses on this podcast. And this week was absolutely no different. Uh, Every podcast up until last week, I was always predicting there's going to be a death. There's going to be a death. Well, there never was. Uh, But this week, I I had said about this upcoming episode that there wasn't going to be a death. but There was going to be teases of somebody dying, in my opinion, is what I thought. And I was wrong. Uh, It looks like... Unfortunately, somebody did die this week, and it wasn't as surprising of a death since I did call the death um, in one of the, I guess you could say, earlier episodes of the podcast. Uh, But it was Griselda who had gotten her foot injured when they were escaping from the barber shop, and she finally passed away on this episode. But there was so much going on in this episode that it was really, really hard to... I had to watch this episode actually a couple of times just to really notice everything that was being presented in this in this episode. I mean, for 60 minutes, 45 if you take out the actual commercials, there was a lot going on. We've pretty much, in this episode more than any other, everything's hit the fan 10 times just as fast. And it ends with it just about to ramp up even more with what I'm assuming is Dodger Stadium and countless number of walkers that seem very much so agitated. Um, Not not so much like the walkers that were trying to get out of the cafeteria in The Walking Dead. These were almost... It looked like they almost were going to bust down those doors themselves. But... It looks like, uh, unfortunately, or depending on how you look at it, fortunately, Lieutenant Moyers is now gone, as will be most of the soldiers by the beginning of the next episode, I'm assuming, since they wanted to drop Travis off and head to their families. So it seems like things are going to be ramping up. It looks like the military is all but done. Uh, Things are escalating at a very crazy and very fast pace at this point. And it looks like, I'm going to make the prediction again, but this time it looks like more people are going to die. Now, I do have to say, we found out more about Daniel in this episode than we had previously. It looks like he had, in his past, had joined the ranks of the oppressors of his country. And he did a lot of interrogating for them. And he got to do some more of that with Sean Hatosi's character uh, tonight, which was very hard to watch. It was very gruesome, and they didn't show much, but you could just, with the noises they were using, you know, the Foley effects, and just your imagination running wild. Ooh, that was that was kind of rough. Now, it was also different to see Madison completely compliant in letting Daniel torture Sean Hattosi's character, and that it seems like, for better or worse, they got all the information they needed. I assume that at this point Daniel knows Griselda is going to be dead, even though she was already killed. But now that they know the Cobalt Initiative is going to be going down, that things aren't going to last in that little gated-off community, as we know so much from our experiences on The Walking Dead, they generally don't. Was it just me, or did it seem like they were teasing something out of Alicia and Chris when they were in that house? Um, I get that they're both from different parents, being Chris being actually Travis's, and Alicia being Madison's, but it seemed to me like they were hinting at a future romance, maybe? Or possibly just another kind of Fear the Walking Dead's version of Daryl and Carol. I don't know, because technically they're not brothers and sisters, 
but then they would be, I guess, steps if Madison and Travis got married. I don't know. It's really confusing, and that was really odd, uh, but, you know, I don't know what they're doing with it. On a side note here, I do have to say the actor who plays Strand, who was just introduced in this episode, uh, Coleman Domingo, has an amazing, amazing voice. Um, every time I heard him talk, I was first thought was like, hey, is that the guy who does previously on AMC's The Walking Dead? Or uh, really just, <laughs> he's like the next Morgan Freeman. He's got a voice made for narrating. Not not that, that he's also, I mean, obviously he's, he's actually a really good actor. But um, he's got a second career waiting for him in, in narration and all sorts of uh, audio work just from his voice alone. So, yeah, uh, I'm interested to see where, where his character is going to go because it seems like now that the military, the former Big Bad has now fallen or is getting ready to completely disintegrate, they're going to need another Big Bad and it looks like Strand could fill those shoes. Uh, he's obviously taking Nick with him, and he's got plans on how he's going to uh, run things, I guess you could say. It's going to be interesting to see. I mean, I know we only got one episode left, but hopefully we're going to find out a little bit more about Strand and about what he is going to do and maybe see some of it. Um, I'd hate to think that somebody's going to open up that stadium full of walkers, but... I mean, how else could that end? I mean, they're not going to show it just for it to not have anything happen. So I, f I have a feeling that if anybody's going to open up that stadium, it will probably be Strand. Because I don't think Travis nor Daniel would even try to do that. Because either of those, they don't know a lot about the dead at this point. But I think they know enough to know that there is dead people in there. And that they would be doing a lot more harm and trying to find out any information by going through there than they would anywhere else. Now, Travis, on the other hand, I've heard a lot of complaints online that Travis hasn't seemed to been, be getting the bigger picture, that he's always hesitant, he doesn't want to make a move, um, which is obviously not something you'd want to do in the zombie apocalypse. You, you've got to be willing to, to, to do stuff. I mean, he didn't want to kill the guy, um, the, the neighbor, in a couple episodes ago because... He still thought he was human, yet he was missing half of his face. And people have been commenting that he needs to start being more take charge and doing stuff. And in this episode, it seemed like he was heading in the right direction. I mean, before everything happened, Lieutenant Moyer and everything, he had a thinly veiled kind of threat in there about an uprising if Lieutenant Moyer didn't bring their people back. But then... He was unable to kill that walker in the city, so we're not 100% sure, but we know that he's going to have to make some decisions and split time in the next week on the finale, and it's probably going to be one of the most harrowing episodes yet. Now, I feel like... I've pretty much covered everything in here. I do want to know your thoughts, so if you could tweet them at me. Or Facebook me them. We will talk. Me and Alyssa will talk over these next week. Now if you want to get in contact with us. Once again our Facebook is. Facebook.com slash Creech Creative. Instagram and Tumblr at Creech Creative. You can get me on Twitter. At CJCNOV88. And Alyssa at Alyssa Leanne. And I'm also available on. CreechCreativeProductions.com now that is going to end it for the Walking Dead wrap up this week where we covered episode 5 Cobalt of Fear the Walking Dead. Next up is the beginning of our interview with Lincoln Castellanos who you know obviously from the show that we've been reviewing for the past 5 weeks Fear the Walking Dead. He was Tobias and uh, he's been a huge fan favorite so far and he's only been in I believe 2 episodes if I remember correctly. He's done an amazing job with the character. He's built up an amazing fan base. And he actually had his first Walker Stalker Con over this weekend at Philadelphia. And it looks like he had a great time. Now, we are going to start the interview now. 
And when it gets close to our 45 minute time limit, we're going to end it. And then we'll pick back up in part two with the rest of that interview. I hope you guys enjoy it. How's everything been going for you? It's been going good. It's been going good. I, um, I got some really exciting news last night that I, unfortunately, I like, can't share that to the public yet. But um, it, it's going to be coming soon. People will, will get to uh, be a part of it and uh, enjoy enjoy the experience. So, uh, so anyway, some, some good news came last night, and I'm like really excited about it. So that's going to carry into this weekend when I go to Philly. Yes, yes. I was a big fan of Robert Kirkman's Walking Dead universe. I was a fan of the comics first and foremost. I've been reading those since 2008. And when I found out AMC was going to do the uh, Walking Dead show, I thought, well, you know, it's going to be in good hands because AMC, you know, uh, prior to Walking Dead, they had Breaking Bad, they had Mad Men. So I knew that they were going to continue, the channel was going to continue its streak of, you know, good quality drama, character-driven shows. And that's what The Walking Dead, you know, that's what it owes its success to. Its, its, its story is focused on these characters and they're the most important thing about the show. It's not about the walkers or the danger. It, uh, it's about the danger to each other. So that that's what I love about The Walking Dead, and that's what I love really about this new show for The Walking Dead. You really get to experience that. Exactly. Now, going back to the convention, there's going to be plenty of actors from The Walking Dead there. Is there any uh, actors that you haven't met yet that you're excited to see in Philly? Well, I have seen Norman Reedus once before. He was at a uh, screening of uh, The Boondock Saints 2, and I got to meet him and uh, Sean Patrick and uh, the rest of that cast. So I've seen Norman before. I would love to meet uh, Andrew Lincoln just to see what it feels like to have two Lincolns in the room, if he's going to be there. Uh, but definitely I would love to meet uh, Lenny, Lenny James. Awesome. Well, I, I I don't think Andrew is going to be at Philly, but I know you got announced for Atlanta as well, and, and Andrew Lincoln will definitely be there. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I know Atlanta's going to be a really fun weekend, especially being Halloween. And, you know, it just goes back to uh, this has been a really exciting year for me on a personal level and on a creative level to be playing somebody who is as special and unique as Tobias is. As an actor, it's, it's an honor. And as a fan of the Walking Dead world from Robert, it's, uh, it's exciting. I know that you were in the first two episodes so far of uh, Fear the Walking Dead, and you've became a, a fan favorite character very quickly. Some reviewers have been comparing you to Fear the Walking Dead's version of Glenn or uh, Morgan. How, how exciting is that? Well, it's very exciting, uh, but more importantly, it, it's very humbling for me because to start off as a fan of the show, to suddenly be a part of the new show, of this companion series, it's, it's very, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that AMC, the network, and all the producers gave me. Uh, Dave Erickson, Gail Ann Hurd, uh, David, Greg, Bill, uh, all the producers, the whole writing staff and the crew. It's been such an amazing family to join in on. And it's an experience that I won't soon forget, and I'm just looking forward to whatever comes next, if anything. I mean, I don't know what's in the future for me, but, you know, uh, your guess is as good as mine. That's all I can say. It does seem like no matter what, you've got a, uh, a means to come back if, if they, uh, they bring you back, because you're, you're one of the very few characters now in the, uh, the Walking Dead universe to not be killed off yeah yeah well uh, i'm really glad tobias knows what's up you know <laughs> it's uh it, I, I feel very lucky that I, I get to play somebody who is as smart as cautious and as um special as tobias i think uh that i i can understand everyone's immediate connection to him because when we first meet him he is very much a social outcast. He's very introverted, very shy, very soft-spoken, and only until M Madison, uh, played by Kim Dickens, only until Miss C threatens to 
kick him out of school does he finally start to speak up for himself and really share some of that paranoia that he's kept in it, with himself for like the last couple of weeks because he's been doing all the research uh, prior to everything unfolding rapidly. So he knows civilization is ending, but no one wants to believe him. Well, well now people do, but uh, hopefully it's not too late for Madison or Travis or, or their families. And uh, of the of the cast, as you as you just mentioned, Kim Dickens and Cliff Curtis and uh, the, Alicia and on all the others, who uh, on the set did you uh, spend the most time with, and did you enjoy hanging out with the most? Oh well, the most time was spent with Kim Dickens, and I have been a fan of Kim for a long time. I have loved her work in Deadwood, Sons of Anarchy, uh, House of Cards, Treme. I. When I first found out I was going to be working with her, that's the first thing I told her. I said, how, I asked her, how was working on Tremé? Oh, I loved that show. Oh, I love David Simon, you know, because he's the guy that's in The Wire. And I've been a big admirer of her work for a long time. So to spend the most time with her, to have all my scenes with her, uh, to learn from her, um, it, it was very much something, the experience of being an actor working with Kim mirrored the experience of Tobias, following in, you know, Miss C's, uh, you know, protection. Because in, in Fear the Walking Dead, Tobias has only Miss C to look up to and to call upon for for some, you know, security or, you know, she's the only one that he feels he can reach out to at this moment. So it's very much uh, the, the experience of working with her as an actor and being somebody who had to look up to her character, they were running parallel. So it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun hanging out with her and getting to know her. One of the last scenes you were in before um, you left on the bus, you got to fight one of the uh, the early on walkers. How was it shooting that scene? Oh, that scene, it was so much fun. I had such a blast working with, with uh, Scott Lawrence, who plays uh, Artie, Principal Artie, and Kim again. Uh, that was an intense day, actually. That that day was about, oh, you know, well over eight, ten hours. Uh, but we wanted to get everything right, and we wanted to make sure everyone was safe with, you know, the fight choreography. So to work with the choreographer and the stabbing motions and how to come in and save Madison at the last second and really try to defend her and defend myself, to learn how to, to do that and, and convey that, 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 that experience truthfully. And honestly, uh, that moment for me in the, to, to be in that, that exact moment when the infected is coming at me and is about to knock me down the stairs, I was genuinely scared uh, because they had some uh, contact lenses in Scott's eyes so I could see the terror in his eyes. So it was, it was quick to, you know, just put myself in that situation honestly and it was a lot of fun, and to do it a couple of times, well, you know, as an actor, I live for those moments. To be able to work and have fun, to have them go hand in hand, it's a huge blessing I'm happy to, to have had. Definitely, and and, it, and even though it was, like you said, a very harrowing scene on the show, it did look like it could definitely be a lot of fun. You were right. The, the whole experience was a lot of fun, especially that scene. And then prior to the altercation with, with Scott, um, just coming down the hallway with the cart and having the can fall. Um, that was a nice little happy accident because it's not in the script that something falling off the cart. We're just making such a sharp turn and doing it so many times. At one point, a can falls and I go to pick it up and the director, Adam Davidson, who was a real pleasure to work with in those two episodes, just asked me, pulled me aside, and he goes, you think he'd pick it up? I'm like, yeah, he would. <laughs> he came all this way to get as much as he could. He's not going to leave anything behind. So that, to have that moment happen and to have it be cemented in, in the episode, that, that's a lot of fun. It puts, puts a big smile on my face. Since it was a little bit physical as well, did you get any bumps or bruises from, from that scene? Oh, nothing I couldn't walk away from. Uh, I definitely like to put myself, put all of my energy into every take, into every motion, every action. Um, I'm not somebody who likes to just, you know, do it halfway. I, I really do truly commit to these moments, and for somebody like Tobias, who's never been in a situation like this, I would imagine, uh, to suddenly thrust himself into something like that, 
I definitely wanted to do my best job to uh, convey that experience of, gosh, he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he's going to do whatever he can. So uh, at the end of the day, you know, we were all tired because it was a long day, but I just felt nothing but joy and satisfaction. Um, there on set, you know, everyone was, was watching behind the, behind the cameras, and uh, Gail uh, just shared some nice words with me and, wished, you know, told me a job well done. So I appreciated her support and the support of the crew that day. It was a lot of fun. On uh, your Twitter page, it says you, you know, are an actor, writer, director, artist. Is there any one thing you enjoy the most doing? It's acting. It's first and foremost, it's always been acting. I've been acting since I was four, three years old, watching Disney movies. Uh, my, my parents remember this like it's just yesterday. You know, I would watch a Disney movie and then, you know, reenact whatever I was watching. So I love doing plays and uh, the Catholic school I was a part of. I continued in drama club in high school. I've loved performing for as long as I've been here on this earth. So I'm really appreciative of my my parents for, you know, just motivating me to continue that and to have that passion be so much so that I've had to expand into other, you know, branches in that tree, uh, directing, writing, editing. It's th- th- they're all experiences that I enjoy so much partaking in. Editing, especially. I learned that in school and writing. I'm uh, finishing up my master's program uh, for screenwriting. So th- they-, they all, to me, mean so much. Uh, but if I'm having to choose one, it's going to be acting, always. That- that's what I love the most. Performing, storytelling. I think at the end of the day, they're all one and the same. We're just storytellers, and however way we choose to express ourselves, you know, our hope at the end of the day is that we can share a story with other people that they'll walk away from feeling something. That's very well put. Now, it also says uh, that you love your, your family and faith. So how much has, has your faith come into play when choosing roles for projects? Well, my faith is, a, is the biggest part of my life, uh, and certainly my family is is right there too, my family, my faith, close friends, but uh, right now I'm at a point where my faith and my belief in uh, God and my family, to have that support and to, to, to believe in that and have that, you know, uh, right behind me, always supporting me, it's always just helped my confidence when I go into a room for an audition. And certainly that feeling of being positive and being confident was with me when I had the audition for Fear the Walking Dead, which was in early January. I got the audition on a Wednesday night, uh, had the audition on a Friday morning, and Friday night I got the part. There was no callback or anything. It was, you got it, you're shooting Monday. So uh, very much so that that weekend was a whirlwind of uh, joyous emotions and I feel very blessed for this opportunity because I don't take anything for granted as an actor. I'm always grateful for every opportunity to get into a room, to see casting directors and producers directors, to show them my take on a character and I'm very fortunate and grateful that everyone from the Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead team uh, took a chance on me and believed in me and my my energy for Tobias. So there, it takes a village, certainly, with something as big as AMC's Fear the Walking Dead. So I owe a lot of thanks to the casting, Wendell O'Brien, to all the producers, to all the writers, to the whole cast, crew. And at the end of the day, you know, I have my faith and my family to thank for just being there from the very beginning. That is awesome and very inspiring. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I hope it is. You know, because... As an actor, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one in L.A. or around the country who's trying to, you know, be an actor. And if there's any advice I could share with aspiring actors or people who are interested in moving out to, you know, the big city or one of the cities, L.A., uh, New York, or San Fran, wherever there's, you know, thriving art happening, my advice would be to just believe in yourself and believe in the people who support you and just have that trust in yourself to say, I'm here for a reason, 
I want to tell a story, and I'm going to tell it this way, my way, the way I know how to. I do have um, the fan questions put up now. We we announced that, that you were joining the podcast, and we, we put the word out on Facebook and Twitter, and we've got an absolutely overwhelming, in a positive way, um, and an overwhelmingly positive response. Uh, we've got... A, <laughs> yeah, we've cool, got... We've got a, a ton of questions, so it was really, really hard to narrow them down because we, we got probably multiple episodes worth of questions, and they're all really good. Um, and, and there's a lot of uh, praise for your, for your character and the performance uh, of your character in it. Uh, and it was, it was really good to, to read all of these. So I, I've got, got quite a few of these here for you today. Okay, uh, first one is uh, by Mike uh, Reinert. Uh He just wants to know, how did you get on the show? Was there like a casting call, or, or how did you find out about that they were filming uh, Fear the Walking Dead? Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to answer Mike's question. So uh, I'm lucky to say I have representation. I have a great team behind me, a group of amazing, lovely women who believe in me and have supported me for several years now, and they're the ones who help me get uh, an audition uh, with the casting director for Fear the Walking Dead. So, as any actor knows, and for anyone who may not know, uh, the way it works is you get an audition notice you have about maybe a day or less to prepare until you get in the room. And when you're in the room, the casting director's there. If you're good enough, you get a call back, and then it's the directors and producers and writers. Then, if they really love you then, then you get the part. So, for me to get the audition notice on a Wednesday night, to go in Friday morning, to get the part that same night. You know, it's very, uh, very different. That's never happened to me before, but I'm lucky to have finally had an experience like that. But that's how I got it, you know. I got the audition for it. I worked hard to uh, study the character and get as much as I could out of the information on the pages, and I just put that energy out in the audition. And I'm glad it worked out. At Antonio from Twitter has uh, another question kind of similar to that one. Once you auditioned, uh, they were wanting to know, I mean, we we spoke earlier that you were already a fan of The Walking Dead. Uh, What was your initial reaction to getting the part uh, of Tobias in in Fear the Walking Dead? Ah, well, an overwhelming amount of joy, happiness. I was feeling a lot of stuff that day. But as soon as I got the word, as soon as I got the good news, I um, I had to calm down a little bit because I had to be like, okay, I got to get home and share the news. Because I'm in, I'm in Hollywood in Los Angeles, and my family is in the Coachella Valley, about two and a half hours away from L.A. But I got the news Friday night. I took a bus back home Saturday morning, surprised them. And when I gave them the news, they were on cloud nine. That that was a fun weekend, and certainly, as a fan of the show, I was so excited, and I still am, you know, talking to you right now. This whole year has been an amazing, fun ride, and Tobias is awesome. He's awesome, and I'm so glad he's somebody who, through his paranoia and his closed-offness, is so on top of everything that's happening around him. And I think as a fan of the show, having watched all five seasons of Walking Dead and having read all the comics and being up to date with The Walking Dead, um, it's kind of like a happy coincidence that, you know, I, being such a big fan, is able to play somebody who is so on top of his stuff and who has a very clear idea about what's happening around him. So that that's probably the, the most fun part about playing Tobias for me. At Sarah Jewell um, off Twitter asks, what's your favorite part of being in the Walking Dead family? Oh, well, the, the fair part of being in the Walking Dead family for me is just, I mean, that kind of answers the question. That's just being in the family, just to be in the room in this amazing world of Robert Kirkman's. Uh, I told him when, when I met him uh, when we were shooting the pilot, I told him it was such an honor to be a part of his world, and I was very grateful for the opportunity. And, I mean, he was happy to be there, and I, I think 
I don't want to speak for, for Mr. Kripman, but I think he's very happy with how everything has turned out, you know, with The Walking Dead show and with Fear the Walking Dead companion series. It's an amazing world, uh, and it's a character drama, it's a character-driven drama that even if you take out walkers and infected for an episode, you're still going to get such a gripping, captivating episode because it's, at the end of the day, about these characters and how they are going through these uh, emotions for the first time. You know, what do you do when Doomsday, you know, approaches at your door and suddenly the people that you love are suddenly changed? How do you respond to that? How do you react? And how do you survive that? So that's what I love about the family is having to ask those questions for myself now. It's a lot of fun. Becky Blackburn Vargas off of uh, Facebook. She wants to know that, um, well, that Tobias himself had said that there were strength in numbers. And she was wondering, in your opinion, why uh, Tobias did not go with Maddie. Yeah, it's a good question. And I thought about that too. And my answer to that is in that moment, uh, Tobias and Missy just barely came out alive of a terrifying uh, near-death experience with with the infected Artie. And Tobias knows very well how much Missy is going through. And having known Nick uh, when he was in high school, and because as Tobias mentioned earlier on in that second episode, he was a sophomore when, when Nick was in high school with him, uh, he knows how badly Nick needs help and certainly knows how badly he needs his mom. And I think Tobias doesn't want to feel like a burden to her when she has so much she's got to worry about with Nick and her other, and with her daughter and with Travis. Uh, she's got a whole plate of drama and, and worries uh, alone, you know, right there without Tobias. And I think it's a combination of that and also Tobias does feel he'll be fine, especially after having come out of that situation with, with, the, with the walker. Um, yes, there is strength in numbers, but he has a dead set plan on what he needs to do. He knows exactly what he's got to do next, and he's just going to keep on with his agenda. And maybe, maybe someday they'll meet up again. I don't know. I don't know. But that's my answer to that question because I did think about it. But if you really do think about it, yeah, he doesn't want to burden Missy with, with you know, him tagging along when he's <laughs> when he's sitting next to a uh, a uh, suffering Nick trying to come off of with you know withdrawals and stuff. So very true. And I have a Laura Ann Karate off of Facebook as well I wants to know. I mean, obviously. Since you left by school bus, there wouldn't be a lot of space. Um, but she wants to know what what you think is the reasoning for Tobias leaving most of the cart of food and supplies at the school. <laughs> it, that that by far is the question that I see the most online when when I'm interacting with with uh, the fans on on Facebook and on Twitter. And it's an honest, valid question, and my answer is. Well, who's to say he didn't grab some and put them in his backpack? I think at the end of the day, he just almost got killed. <laughs> and the first thing on his mind and Madison's mind is to get the hell out of there. So, you know, his his initial plan to get there, uh, get the supplies from the school, may not have gone the way he wanted it to, but certainly the high school cafeteria isn't the only place he knows has supplies. So I think, I think Tobias is just fine. Definitely. And I mean, he can always come back and, and raid the, the uh, school again. I would assume if he, if he needed to, I mean, it's not like he, he doesn't know where it's at. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So maybe something else happens off screen, but in that moment, I think anyone would realistically if they almost got their head, you know, chewed out by by a zombie, they'd be like, yeah, I'm just going to leave. <laughs> I'm just going to drop whatever I'm doing and just get the heck out of here. <laughs> Definitely. And I've got at Leanne off Twitter. She asks if 
in this scenario, if Fear the Walking Dead eventually uh, crosses path with The Walking Dead in the future, uh, do you think Tobias would be able to be an asset to Rick's group? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, because I think there's something to be said about Tobias. Uh, despite his little shortcomings, having spent so much time researching the outbreak initially, seeing how it started to spread at the beginning, and to experience firsthand, you know, in close proximity, just how bad it is. And these are just my hopes, but my hopes are that in the future, if there is a future for Tobias, he's only going to get stronger because of those experiences that he's had. And that would prove only to be an important, you know, positive if you were to meet up with with Rick's group. At the same time, uh, I think the fans already know that, you know, Fear the Walking Dead is happening in L.A. and The Walking Dead's over in, in Georgia. So the chances of them meeting up, they are slim to none unless Tobias found his way, you know, uh, access to a car and decided to take a road trip because because he heard there was good things on, on, on that side of the world, uh, which is possible. But I know that Dave Erickson has said in past interviews that there are no plans right now to have them uh, intersect with each other. Uh, what I think is good about Fear the Walking Dead that makes it separate from The Walking Dead is, you know, fear is covering the beginning of civilization collapsing. We're on the cusp of everything uh, going, going downhill. And The Walking Dead, you already know the game. You already know how to play. You know who the players are. And it's a very, it's a very different tone from what Fear is dealing with. Fear is dealing with the shark you don't see. And these characters, all of them, including Tobias, are still trying to come to terms with what's going on. Uh, if everything continues to go well for Tobias, uh, yeah, technically, he would be a huge asset to Rick's team. Absolutely. And I hope at that point he's got a bigger knife. (laughs) And like we were saying, we're going to pick this back up on part two, so we will see you then on Creech Questions. Hey, y'all, this is Lou Temple. Greg Nicotero. Patty Moe. T. Love. Sarah Jensen. Emma Bell. Bing Chen. For Vincent M. Ward. Jeff Cobra. Jose Pablo Cantillo. Danny Robot. Lonis Gilliard Jr. Nestor Carbonell. Harold Paranoid. Daniel Thomas May. Ellen Moss. Sarah Wayne Kelly. Chad L. Coleman. I'm R.J. Bay for Breaking Bad. Bates Montel. AMC's Comic Book Man. The Walking Dead, and you're listening to Creech. 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 Creech questions. You better listen up good or I'm come get you. Hey everyone out there, this is CJ Creech, and you too can listen to our celebrity interviews on our podcast, Creech Questions. Check us out on CreechCreatorProductions.com and Facebook.com slash Productions.